What you guys in this video we're going to be taking a look at how you can choose the right power supply for your new PC build in 2019. Now it's really important to buy a really good quality power supply don't cheap out and buy a really cheap power supply. I see a lot of people doing that in their builds and uh, it really isn't worth it because there'd be no protection there and if it lets go and blows it could end up blowing all your expensive uh, PC components. So it's important to get the budget right when you're buying all your PC components. Make sure that you buy a nice balanced system where you're not uh, cheaping out on your power supply. You're getting a good power supply, preferably something that's certified and uh, get the right amount of power. And I'm going to show you all these things in this video. Uh, one by one, we're going to go through everything in this video. So again, so uh, what we're going to do here is take a look at the rated power now as you can see here this is an SF 600 watt power supply and this is a platinum power supply as well certified so we need to look at the efficiency ratings for power supplies and you can see here this one is platinum we also have 80 plus uh, plus bronze plus silver plus gold plus platinum and even titanium now you'll see the platinum and the titanium have a 89% and 90% uh, rating under um, hundred percent load which is excellent so make sure you'll get a good certified a 80 plus certified bronze is good enough for most builds they may be looking at the brand here and you can see EVGA and Corsair just remember a lot of these are OEM makers they don't uh, make their own power supplies so research your manufacturer EVGA and XFX don't manufacture their own power supplies Seasonic, Channel Wall, CWT, Delta FSP and also Great Wall and Flextronics uh, are the manufacturers uh, for a lot of power supplies. You can see a big list here. I'll show you a website here which allows you to do your research. Go down, find the manufacturer that you want to take a look at. You can see there's a bunch of power supplies that Corsair have in their range. And if you look here, it will tell you some useful information like the maximum power, uh, what model it is, uh, the OEM uh, maker which will be say CWT or HEC and so on. It also tells you uh, whether it's a modular power supply, it also tells you what the certification is and it will tell you a lot of other information there and you can click on these and it will basically take you to uh, and this will take you to a website and uh, they will give you a full written article and a breakdown of that uh, power supply that you're looking for. And sites like that are johnnyguru.com, kitguru, Gamers Nexus, and loads of other sites out there that do them as well. Uh, but basically they've got all the hardware to test these power supplies properly and they will give you an overall uh, a view of what they think of the power supply. Rather than just taking it out of the box and taking a look at it, they will actually fully test it and uh, tell you what it's uh, capable of and who created it and what caps are inside, uh, what the fan make is and stuff like that. So you can see here, this has been torn down and they will show you exactly what is inside and they will also give you their view who created it as you can see here Great Wall Factory which is in China and uh, a lot of people may be shocked by that because they don't understand that Corsair and EVGA and a lot of these other uh, manufacturers that uh, have their logo on there it doesn't necessarily mean it's been made by Corsair it just means uh, they've got their logo on there selling it under their brand but it's actually Great Wall who made it. So you can see here uh, performance 10, total score 9.8, which is a pretty decent uh, score. And again, Kit Guru and uh, Gamers Nexus and loads of other sites out there will do full reviews. Uh, Gamers Nexus does uh, video reviews and they have all the hardware so they can test it for you at 10%. 20%, 50% and 100% load and you'll get a, an idea of how reliable that power supply is and how efficient it is when it's running under 100% load and uh, obviously the better the power supply the better it runs and the Kit Guru does full write-ups of these uh, types of power supplies and other uh, items as well and he's not the only website out there there's loads of other sites that do it as well so I just wanted to quickly show you the power supply here the SF 600 you can see it listed right here and uh, if you look at it here it gives you a full breakdown of what uh, that power supply was rated at 
Now the next important thing is dimensions and form factor. You need to get the right type of uh, power supply for your build. Now, depending on what case you're buying, if you're buying one of these Chinese cases on a budget, uh, you may want to find out how uh, difficult it is to get a power supply in there. Sometimes they are a bit of a squeeze on some of these cases because of the uh, nature of the case itself. Maybe a hard drive uh, cage is in the way. But you can see here the small form factor. There's ultra small form factors. Um, there's also uh, the ATX size. And there's also some other types which you can get as well, which are, are slightly longer. Some of the more powerful ones like the HX series and AX series they will be longer in size. So you have to bear that in mind when you're buying your case and when you're buying your power supply to make sure it fits, just like you would do if you are looking for, uh, say, a closed loop water cooling system or radiator. It's best to go to the manufacturer's website and check the case out to make sure everything fits OK in there and have a good look and see uh, what it looks like. You can see here, this one is a slightly longer than an ATX uh, power supply. It's just got a little bit more length to it, and some of them are shorter as well. Now, it's no good just watching some build video on YouTube. What you want to do is get the measurements right, and you need to go to the manufacturer's website and check the measurements for that case and see if there's anything that's going to be blocking uh, a longer power supply, maybe a uh, hard drive uh, cage or something like that. I have had it before where it's been a bit difficult and the cables are touching the actual um, hard drive cage and I've had issues with that and I'll show you a picture of that in a second. So you want to make sure that also if you're building say an ITX build which is a very small build and the case doesn't take a full size ATX power supply without an adapter like this one here. So you can buy a full size ATX uh, power supply adapter for this case but then what you've got to remember is that will approach on the CPU cooler and you will have a bit more issues there so bear in mind what you're buying here just do the measurements make sure you get the right size for the right case and you should be good to go now you can see here an example for the Silverstone the ATX the SFX L and you also got SFX as well and there's also a longer type one which is slightly larger, longer than the ATX. And this, of course, can cause you a few problems if you go out and buy the power supply, like this 1000 uh, watt power supply here. You can see the length of it and the height of it compared to the SF600 uh, version, which is a small form factor one. It's quite a considerable amount of size bigger. And uh, this is the thing I was talking about with the cases here. You can see this is a smaller power supply in here. If I put a bigger one in, it would have uh, been touching the actual hard drive caddy here and this one doesn't come out and this is because it's a cheap Chinese case and you're going to run into problems. Also you couldn't route the cables through the bottom of the hard drive uh, cage there yet to go around the outside and it looked really messy. So you need to do a bit of research and check out the websites of the case manufacturers and also the power supply manufacturers and make sure uh, that you've got uh, the right type of power supply and case to go uh, with each other. And of course, uh, that also comes into play when you're buying a graphics card and everything else, which we'll cover a little bit later on in the video. So do your research and check out uh, all the information uh, possible. And that way, if you're watching someone else's video online, you're not going to fall into the same uh, trap as uh, a lot of people do, which is buying the wrong type of power supply. Now, hardwired, semi-modular and fully modular power supplies are another option that you need to look at, really. And uh, some of these like this HX750i, this is a fully modular power supply. Now, obviously, fully modular power supplies are going to cost you a little bit more money because obviously uh, they are not molded to the power supply or hard hardwired to the power supply itself. It means you can just put in what cables you need and that can reduce on uh, cable management. It can make cable management a lot more easier. And also, uh, it just means that you're just not going to have a big wadge of cables uh, in your case that you're never going to use because obviously some of these uh, power supplies uh, don't need all of these cables. You might only need to use a few cables and that will just reduce. You can see here this is a semi-modular one which means you're going to have the 24 pin here 
and probably the CPU cable is going to be there. You've got room for some other ones here, SATA 1 and 2, and also peripherals and VGA on there as well. Now, some of them have a lot more uh, available expansion here. It depends how much you're spending, like this SF series, which is about 100 odd pounds which is fully modular and there's no cables attached to it whatsoever, not even a 24 pin. But that's going to come at a bit more of a premium when you buy these sort of power supplies. I personally like the fully modular ones because it gives me a bit more control over what cables I want to use. Uh, whereas uh, the ones like this or the non-modular ones, which are just the standard hardwired ones, which are no ports on here whatsoever to plug your cables into. They are molded to the actual uh, power supply. They're hardwired and that can look a little bit messy. And especially if you're not going to use a lot of those cables, you've got to leave them in the case and it can look very messy indeed compared to a semi-modular like this one, whereas you don't, might not need to use all of those cables. And you normally get a better quality of cable uh, like you're seeing here compared to uh, the hardwired like this one here and these sort of power supplies do come in a lot cheaper but they have their own problems like cable management issues uh, the uh, ketchup and mustard type color scheme they're very poor uh, cover uh, sort of cable sleeves there some of them don't even have those on them and uh, again you won't be able to take any of these cables off they're going to be all in the case and if you've got nowhere to hide them i.e. no cable management slots, then you're going to be stuck with looking at all those nasty cables in your case. So back in the early days, many years ago, that was acceptable. But in modern day uh, computing today, most people like to have a nice tidy uh, build. Now, let's move on to the power ratings here. Again, what power do you need to buy? So we're going to be taking a look here. If you look at the power ratings here, a single rail power supply has single power 12 volt rail uh, which will be feeding all the computer components the multi rail which will divide its power between two or more rails on your uh, power supply now there's useful sites like this here where it will give you a power supply calculator and it will give you uh, some information about desktop servers and also itx and it will let you list all your computer components inside here uh, CPU you can see here and also it will give you an idea where you can just type in here what you're going to be using say for instance uh, Ryzen and uh, you'll be able to select which Ryzen processor you're going to be using here and depending on what you want to do or what your build's going to be just uh, put in your computer components in here and uh, select them all and put every single piece of component in here that is drawing power uh, whether you're going to be overclocking it you need to put the speed of what overclock you're running and uh, stuff like that what voltages you're running and it will give you an accurate readout of what you're going to roughly need uh, to purchase and if you've got any hubs that are plugged in that are not running off the mains and they're using your uh, power off your computer you need to make sure that you put all those in and basically it will give you a, a you know ballpark figure of what you need now the graphics card is obviously going to be pretty hungry. Uh, it's not as hungry as the old days when you used to have the older graphics cards where they used to draw a huge amount of power, especially especially AMD stuff. Many years ago, they were really power hungry and you'd need a big beefy power supply. But nowadays, a lot of stuff is pretty um, low ratings. They're not using as much power as they used to. We're going on to SSD now and uh, a lot of other stuff. So they're drawing less power. But put all those in list it all out and then hit the calculate button and it will give you a ballpark figure of what you actually need uh, to buy now another thing to take a look at here is the website of the graphics card that you are buying so for argument's sake if you're putting this geforce uh, gtx 1070 ti in there going to the website and checking out what power rating you would need for that graphics card because this is probably going to be the most power hungry uh, component that you're putting into the computer you'll see here it will give you the amount of power that is uh, going to be used power consumption is 180 watts but it's saying a recommended PSU is 500 watts so bear in mind, you've got 500 watts just for the graphics card here, and that's what they're recommending. Remember, you've got all your other components in there as well. Now, normally it will run on a lower uh, power supply than that, but you're, you're not going to be running very efficient. You're going to be pushing 
that power supply to the maximum all the time and that's why it's best to uh, get a bigger power supply than what you need you don't have to go too mad 100, 150 watts is something uh, I would recommend to go over by this is a 1080 uh, Ti uh, extreme and you can see here 600 watts they're recommending here for this uh, power supply so bear that in mind and then you've got all your other components to go in there so it's always nice to have a bit of a headroom for your uh, machine so you're not using uh, all the power and it's running at maximum tilt all the time now another thing to look out for is amps on the rail 12 volt rail you can see 50 amps there now some of the cheaper ones that you may see that are unbranded uh, with an LED light on them and they've got 600 watts on them it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a really decent power supply and it may only have 24 amps on that rail and you're going to have trouble running that graphics card with that particular power supply so just take a look at the uh, specs on the side of the power supply you normally get them on the box or on the website they will give you all the inf information about 5 volt rail 3.3 volt rail uh, 12 volt rail and so on and it will give you all that information about what this power supply is capable of and what the certification is in this case which is a bronze certified so 600 watts 600 watts bronze certified uh, 50 amps on the 12 volt rail and then you can work out how much wattage you need by using uh, that calculator and then uh, find a good brand that you want to go with and the size and dimensions and you should be pretty much good to go from there try to get yourself about 150 watts spare so you're not buying a power supply at 600 watts and you're using 600 watts because obviously there's going to be no room for spare spare and uh, the power supply is going to be running pretty much uh, at its optimal performance all the time which you don't really want to do that you want to give a little bit of headroom uh, for upgrades or any sort of uh, changes that you may make to the system at a later date and it just means the power supply is not working as hard and you can see the uh, efficiency rating which we talked about a little bit earlier as well uh, with the uh, certifications so just bear that in mind when you're uh, picking the right power supply uh, for your PC build and try and get one with a decent warranty as you can see that platinum there has a seven year warranty on it which is pretty decent anyway I think that's going to be about it for this video I think we've covered just about everything we need to cover in this one my name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk I hope this video has been helpful to you and I shall see you again for another video real soon thanks again for watching bye for now, now. if you haven't subscribed yet hit the big red subscribe button on my YouTube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos.